We'll now do an introduction to probability. And to do this, we'll start with some definitions. The first definition is for a probability experiment. A probability experiment is a process based on chance that leads to some well-defined results. And we'll talk about the different options for those results. An outcome is the result of a single trial of a probability experiment. These are the different things that could happen if you just go through one trial. While an outcome is the result of a single trial, the sample space is all the possible outcomes that could happen in a probability experiment. And we'll do a few examples of different sample spaces. Let's consider the probability experiment of flipping a coin. In this case, our sample space would be tails or heads, since those are the only two possible things that could happen. If we consider rolling a standard six-sided die, we would have the options of one, two, three, four, five, or six for our sample space. As our last example, we'll look at flipping two coins. Here I could do a heads and a heads. I could do a heads and a tails, a tails and a heads, or two tails. And these are the only four possible outcomes that we could have from flipping two coins. The next thing we'll look at that can be very helpful in probability is a tree diagram. A tree diagram consists of line segments that emanate from a starting point and from the outcome points. And we'll do an example of what this looks like. We'll consider the experiment of flipping three coins. Tree diagrams always start at a single point, and we have a line for each possible option that could happen. We could have a heads or a tails. That's the first coin. Our second coin could also be a heads or a tails, and we need a branch off of each of the original ones. Now, our third coin could also be heads or tails. So once again, we need a branch coming off of each of these. And now, if I follow along any given branch, I have a possible outcome. And if I look at all possible branch it, branches, I have my sample space. The next definition we need is for events. And this is the set of outcomes of a probability experiment. And it can be any possible thing we want to look at that could happen. For example, my last tree diagram where I looked at flipping three coins, maybe I want to consider the event of having at least two heads. These are events. They just are some kind of set of outcomes. They don't have to include everything, but just some set that we want to consider. The first type of events we want to consider are called equally likely events. And these equally likely events have the same probability of occurring. This could be like flipping a coin. A heads and a tails have an equal chance of coming up. The first type of probability we'll look at is called classical probability. And this time if we have an event E, so we'll just let E denote our event. Our probability is given by the number of outcomes in E. So how many different ways we could get E. And then we divide by the total number of outcomes that we could have. And this is the type of probability that most people are pretty familiar with. But we will do some examples. As an example, let's consider that we have a bag that has two red balls, three yellow balls, two white balls, and one black ball. We want to see some of the probabilities here. Let's say I draw one at random. What's the probability of drawing a red ball? And this P of red is how we denote probability. There are two possible ways to draw red balls, and if we look at the total number of things we have, 
we have a total of eight different ways. So one fourth is the probability of drawing a red ball. This is also going to be the same as drawing a white ball since there are also two out of eight white balls. If I wanted to try to draw a yellow ball, well this time there are three yellow balls, eight total balls in the bag. And then finally if I tried to draw a black one, there is only one black one in the bag out of a total of eight. So here are the different probabilities. There are a few rules for dealing with this probability that we'll look at. The first rule, probability is always between zero and one. The absolute lowest probability we could have is zero and the highest probability is one. The second, if we add up the, the probabilities of all of our possible outcomes, we get a total of one. The third one, the probability of an event is equal to zero means that the event is po impossible. For example, the probability that Thanksgiving will be on a Monday next year would be zero, since there is absolutely no chance that would happen. And finally, a probability of an event equal to one means that it's going to happen with absolute certainty. For example, the probability that Thanksgiving will occur on a Thursday next year is one since it occurs on a Thursday every year. The next thing related to probability that we'll look at is called the complement. The complement of an event E is the set of all the outcomes that are not included in E. The complement is denoted by E with a bar over it, which is just read E bar. In addition, the probability of E bar is one minus the probability of E. Another way to write this would say that the probability of E plus the probability of E bar is equal to one. Since we know the sum of all possible outcomes is one, it either has to be an E or an E bar, since that is the definition of E bar. As an example, let's let E be the event rolling a one on a dice. We know there are six sides on the dice, so the probability of E is one over six. In addition, the probability of E bar, there are five other numbers on the dice that we could roll on a six-sided dice. So we have five over six. Another example, if E is rolling an even number, there are three ways to roll an even number on a dice, two, four, or six. So there's a one-half chance. The complement of this would be rolling an odd number, and there are three ways to roll an odd, one, three, and five. So once again, our probability is one-half. The other type of probability we'll look at is called empirical probability. And this one, we look at the frequency of the class divided by the total frequencies. And in general, the main difference between classical and empirical is classical probability is done using, using equally likely events. Empirical probability, on the other hand, is typically based on an observation or an experiment. These are things that we actually see or experiment and get and then we can calculate probabilities according to that. As our example, let's consider we have a group of 20 people and we look at their hair color, which are recorded here. If I select a person at random, the chance that they'll have brown hair well, we observed that there were 10 people with brown hair and a total of 20 people. So the probability is one half. If I look at blonde hair, there were seven people with blonde hair at a total of 20. And then if I look at red hair, I have three out of 20. 